Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Wait on the queue here. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to Ball State University College of Architecture and Planning Symposium, Faculty Symposium, April 2nd, 2008. It is my great, great privilege to introduce our first speaker uh, today is uh, uh, Michele Cuini, a colleague who I've uh, grown quite fond of over the years and who has a, a quite a lot of really interesting um, uh, research uh, projects that, uh, that he's been working on. And uh, uh, I can't wait to, uh, uh, to, to see what he's put together for you today. Uh, Michele Cuini is, uh, uh, got his uh, Master of Science from the Politecnico di Milano in 1973, as well as an MA of Architecture from the University of Sheffield. Um, he is uh, currently a professor in the Department of Architecture and today he's going to talk to us a little bit about the digital reconstruction of architectural world heritage. Uh, he's going to uh, uh, highlight some of the work that he's been doing in the, in the forum in Rome, uh, as well as some of the scanning work that, uh, that he's been up to. Uh, without any further from me, uh, please join me in welcoming Michele Cuini. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Kevin has been uh, a supporter of some of this research, as you see in my presentation. I'd like to say that I'm really honored to be in this session with uh, my colleagues, Dave Shane and also John Fieldwork uh, from the Center of Media Design. And uh, because they, uh, they've accepted for their misfortune to be part of my work, participate in my work. And uh, I'm looking forward in particular to John Fieldwork's presentation because he's going to talk about uh, Second Life and uh, and I don't even have a life uh, because I'm doing this project. So I'm going to learn a lot from that. Um, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, this uh, work using this first image. In fact, it's, it's the only one I have. Uh, the uh, You see here the, the uh, Roman Forum. So if you have ever been to the Roman Forum, and I know millions of people go there every year, uh, you see a bunch of ruins. And it's really hard to understand uh, what they were for most people. So you, know, one, you wonder sometimes what, what, was, what do those people think? You know, and what do they really enjoy by being there? Um, and what you see uh, is, uh, around the Roman Forum is a lot of stalls where people, some vendors, sell these booklets uh, with the photographs of the ruins and then there is an overlay with a drawing of the reconstructed building. And uh, I've always snubbed those uh, booklets because uh, those reconstructions are not very scholarly. Uh, but nevertheless, they're very useful for the general public. So, of course, there are lots of reconstructions of how the Roman Forum was or lots of other uh, Roman buildings or other historic buildings uh, in history books and so on. And, uh, uh, and, and, of course, with the digital age, we can uh, do very sophisticated, very uh, realistic, photorealistic models uh, that, to a certain extent, are superior to uh, the conventional two-dimensional drawings. Uh, not just for the public, because uh, uh, if you do a digital model, you can, first of all, uh, be much more accurate in a, uh, in a spatial reconstruction of a building. In a two-dimensional drawing, you can hide a lot of things you not quite understand. Uh, it's harder to do that in a three-dimensional model. And this is what um, archaeologists and, uh, and uh, art historians say. For instance, there is a very good model, very, very detailed model of the Forum of Trajan, which is just next door to that site, uh, done by uh, an American archaeologist, James Packer, who uh, was teaching at uh, Northwestern University uh, near Chicago. And uh, he used uh, digital modeling as a way to understand exactly what the uh, plausible reconstruction of, of, that, of those uh, buildings would be. Um, so there is a, um, a, uh, some importance for um, uh, architectural historians and scholars as well as for the general public in 
uh, working on digital modeling of uh, archaeological sites uh, as well as other uh, historically important buildings which are now lost. Um, now the <coughs> the um, uh, way uh, the digital models uh, I'm working on uh, in this project works work is not exactly, uh, it's a bit different from a, uh, a plain digital model which eventually gets reproduced as a set of static images in, in architectural books. Uh, the, the digital models we want to produce with this work uh, have three, um, three main important features. And the first one is to um, introduce a time dimension in the modeling, in the sense that if you, uh, uh, you can reproduce a, uh, a uh, reconstruct a building uh, at a certain point in time. But the, the uh, historic reality is that uh, that building might have existed in very different uh, conditions, in very different contexts. Uh, has been used in many different ways and rebuilt a number of times in history. So uh, by uh, freezing um, the model in, uh, at one particular time, you lose all that uh, time dimension, all that uh, historical development that is really taking place um, uh, for that site. Uh, it's interesting actually here, the, uh, <coughs> this, uh, this is the Roman Forum seen from uh, the site where I'm working on. And uh, you can see this roof here. You see the bathroom in, in uh, the following slides. I've got some other slides. And this is, uh, building has been reconstructed over the Roman ruins to protect the remains uh, of that site. And uh, people that visit the forum don't necessarily understand that that's a modern reconstruction. Maybe they don't understand that it's not uh, intended to, re to replicate exactly what the building was in, in the Roman times, whatever that means. So <clears throat> there is a, a, a need to explain also uh, the, these type of issues to the, uh, to the visitors. Um, the, um, the second um, feature of, of, the, of the digital model that we are proposing is that uh, the models uh, will be linked to uh, a database of documentation so that, uh, first of all, uh, documentation can support a certain hypothesis uh, of reconstruction as well as being a, a way to centralize information which is very often dispersed in lots of different archives and museums. You may have the ruins of a building, for instance, in the forum, but the pieces of that building are stored uh, in a museum in Rome and some other pieces in the museum. In, uh, in London or, or in Paris, and there are some, uh, uh, some documents about that in here and there. So um, the uh, co collecting in a digital way all uh, this uh, documentation uh, and linking the documentation to the building is a way to make the model uh, much more um, useful for both scholars and the general public. And the third thing we are trying to do is to uh, base the reconstructions on uh, very accurate surveys. And in order to do that, we are using laser scanning technology, which allows a much superior degree of uh, uh, recording the uh, data, particularly on complex sites like archaeological sites, than conventional surveys, which I'm uh, using photography or, or drawings. Um, and there is a difference uh, with, uh, between this type of modeling and some other modeling which uh, is being done currently in the Roman Forum. I think the, uh, one of the major um, projects of, for the digital modeling of the Roman Forum going on right now is the one started by uh, Bernard Frischer at the virtual lab uh, at the University of Berkeley. And he's now moved actually to the University of Virginia with that project. And that's a virtual reality reconstruction of the entire Roman Forum, uh, which is a very interesting idea because you can move and experience the space. The limitation of that model is that uh, 
uh, it's done for uh, a, a very precise date. So it produces the Roman Forum on June the 21st of the year 200 AD, sorry, 400 AD. So uh, that's one, uh, one limitation. The other limitation is that because it, ha it is a virtual reality modeling, uh, all the reproduction of the buildings cannot be uh, very accurate. So we started with this idea of trying to, well, first of all, base any reconstruction on, a, on the highest possible degree, degree of accuracy. Uh, the, uh, for the, the general public, there are already some initiatives uh, that uses digital modeling in the context of museums when there are um, fragments, for instance, of a building like the famous uh, Elgin marbles and the frieze of the Parthenon. Uh, in, uh, in the British Museum. Uh, uh, that's one of the few cases, I think, around the world where a museum is using digital modeling to explain the context of the marbles, to explain uh, the meaning of the carvings, and so on. Uh, so that's one um, of, the, um, of the products that can result from this type of research. I think that there will be a more and more uh, uh, demand for this type of um, uh, of uh, digital explanations uh, for the public in, in museums. And uh, in order to uh, work on, I'm going to, to show a couple of projects here. Well, the first one is in the uh, Roman Forum. It deals with the site of, a, uh, of an early medieval church, uh, Santa Maria Antiqua, which was built um, uh, in, around the sixth century inside uh, the complex of, uh, of the mission at the foot of the Palatine Hill. And the, si oops, sorry. the site is right there. And uh, <clears throat> in order to work on that project, um, I assembled a team of people. It's like, it's like uh, making a movie. We have units, three units in each country we're working in. And uh, I actually forgot one person in the UK unit, which is uh, quite important, is uh, Paul Richens was going to work on the, one of the three digital models uh, for this project. So we have a combination of, uh, of architectural uh, historians, of archaeologists, of um, people uh, from the field of historic preservation. And it's a really interdisciplinary, inter interdisciplinary work. Uh, this is the site that we are going to model for the Santa Maria Antiqua project. It's uh, pretty complex. It's made of uh, four or five major areas. The church itself is there with uh, the atrium in front of the entrance. Uh, there is a, an oratory. This is the one that you saw in the first slide uh, in its rebuilt form. This picture is uh, uh, around 1980. Uh, it was um, that this building, this chapel was rebuilt around 2000, and you have a, a very large structure like this, and and then uh, the site is also connected to the Palatine through a, a, a ramp that goes up that way. And as you can see here, the that chapel I was talking about uh, reconstructed to preserve the uh, frescoes inside. There are, of course, uh, um, uh, physical models of the site. There's a very famous model by Italo Gismondi done in the 1930s in the Museum of uh, Roman Civilization in Rome that has a certain hypothesis for the reconstruction of that site, and uh, that's fairly controversial. So that's one of the issues we are, um, we are dealing with. In, uh, we started with a pilot project in October 2004, and uh, our first challenge was to, was to find a, a laser scanner. I teamed up with Elizabeth Loudon from, the, uh, from Texas Tech University because they had experience in uh, using uh, long-range uh, laser scanners for historic preservation. And uh, she didn't want to carry the old equipment from uh, Texas because it was, it was very expensive. So we looked for one in Rome, and we struck a deal in the, in the back roads of Rome, as you can see. 
and we got the laser scan and we started working. And uh, this is the interior of the church where we did our first set of scanning. If you haven't seen, uh, if you ever seen uh, how a laser scanner works, this is a Cyrax 2500. Uh, and basically it uh, beams a laser beam on the surfaces and records the distance between the surface that is hit by the laser beam and the computer, and, sorry, and, and the mirror inside the scanner. And the data is recorded on a laptop so you can see in real time the image of the surface appearing as a, as a luminous point cloud. And I have a, actually a close up of that. So effectively, uh, this is me uh, pretending I'm, I know how to use a laser scanner. Uh, effectively, you get a, a three-dimensional digital model uh, in real time. Uh, it's not ready to be used because uh, you have to move the laser scanner around and combine different files together to create a final model. So this is on a part model. And uh, this is where we started learning what uh, modeling from a point cloud really means. That's where we started having problems because once you um, register, which means so you put together uh, all the different files for an entire building, the amount of data is just enormous. For the entire church, the point cloud we're working uh, with now is uh, over 31 million points, which means if you take that into Rhino, uh, Rhino does, will not probably work, but if you, if you did, you would end up with a polymesh of 31 million triangles, and uh, the memories of our computers here are not able to handle that much. So we have to simplify a lot of, of the files and cut down a lot of data. Uh, here you can see Jorge and Triago, who was a great help over the summer. Uh, what we did was to import those point clouds into Rhino, cut down a lot of the points, and then import, and then uh, mesh them, create a polymesh. The polymesh was imported in Softimage, and this is the model you can see there. Uh, these were uh, parts, uh, inco incomplete laser, uh, laser scanner operations. So but this, the, you can see that the, uh, the level of detail can get from an operation like that uh, is quite reduced. So we were rather disappointed by that idea, although the, the overall model may look uh, great uh, from a distance. Uh, if you imagine you know, that completed with all the holes filled and so on. Uh, we uh, uh, repeated, we completed the laser scanning survey in the summer of 2007 and uh, we were able to get a much better set of data, but it still was impossible to, to go directly from the point cloud to the uh, digital model. So our procedure now is to slice a lot of surfaces, uh, like uh, floor plans, lots of sections and elevations, from the, uh, the point cloud, which is uh, brought into a software called Geomagic, and, uh, and use that for digital modeling, which is based on, uh, on SketchUp, because uh, that's a very practical way of building up uh, a model using different students um, that can work over different semesters and, and build up this model gradually. So there are a set of techniques that can help in the process, like using PhotoMatch. But as I said, the main, uh, the main uh, technique is to model uh, using the uh, these uh, sections from the point cloud uh, as templates. This was the state of the modeling of the church uh, around February. And uh, you can see also for details like the, the capital, this is the, uh, the point cloud brought into Geomagic uh, as a polymesh. Uh, it's virtually impossible to work on that and turn that into a model. You can, even if you uh, did, the file for the capital would be so large that it would be impossible then to use that in a complete model of the church. Uh, the, uh, the second aspect, uh, which I mentioned before, was the link uh, between uh, the model and the databases. In fact, we are going to build three models corresponding to uh, three sets of databases. The first is the archaeology that tells uh, about the excavation 
of the church, of the entire site. The second is about the conservation, which means in this case also the rebuilding of the church, um, which was done in uh, 1900, between 1900 and 1911 mainly. And, and that brings up a lot of issues of, uh, of restoration or conservation of archaeological sites. And we, there was an interesting presentation before about what's happening, for instance, in Sardis by Andy Seeger. And the third model with database is going to be about the history. How was this church really in the ninth century when it was destroyed by an earthquake and abandoned? And this is a reconstruction done in 1900. But so we're going to re reconstruct this digitally and have a critical analysis of this reconstruction. The second project I'm going to skip through in a couple of minutes is the Chicago Stock Exchange. Now this is a, something which is really complementary to, to what uh, we have, you have seen so, so far in this uh, Santa Maria Antico project, uh, in particular in terms of the technologies uh, used. Uh, because the, uh, <clears throat> as you know, the Chicago Stock Exchange was demolished in 1972. And uh, we ended up having some of the fragments of the terracotta panels in our school. Uh, we have about 20 of them. So I started uh, documenting these this pieces, which are here, uh, using a new, uh, I was able to, to see where these pieces were in the building. Uh, we, uh, the college quite fortuitously, fortuitously uh, got this uh, handheld uh, laser scanner uh, last summer, which we were able to uh, start using to um, to document these pieces as three-dimensional models. And this is a, a really new technique for uh, documentation of historic artifacts because uh, if you uh, use a conventional technique like uh, photographs or drawings, you never have all the data that uh, allow you to really examine the piece and know exactly what the surface qualities are going to be like. So this is what you get from, this is the point cloud you get from that laser scanner. And this, as you can see, is much more detailed than what you can get with the Cyrex 2400 or 3000, right? So this is ideal for getting close-ups. And this is, uh, shows um, that even reducing the original data to 5%, if you, can, if you read here, you, you can read that there, uh, there are 70, nearly 73,000 triangles uh, forming that surface. And that's 5% of the original file. Okay? So, and you still see a huge amount of detail as part of, of a reduction of 95% of the information. So that's a real uh, interesting uh, tool to complement the long range laser scanner for documenting historic buildings. <clears throat> this is uh, part of the work you have to do uh, to complete the surfaces. Uh, so there's some manual work which may be not totally historically authentic, but some arbitrary mending. This brings up some issues about uh, uh, you know, what's real in a digital model and what's not, which is uh, an interesting issue to discuss. And uh, what, one of the things you can do with, the, uh, with, uh, with those models, with those digital reconstructions, is the reassembly of pieces or the fragments. When, uh, when we tested the, um, the, this reassembly in uh, the computer, this is done in Rhino, we uh, didn't have the photographs of the original corners, so we had to guess from the fragments as you would have to do in an archaeological site. And, uh, and this shows just the, uh, shows one module of that uh, cornice frieze that you saw in the picture before. If I can go quickly back uh, to the photograph here, you can see that the roof cornice consists of five rows and that reconstruction was a module of the, the bottom row. And we got all the pieces corresponding to one section of, the, of that cornice. And uh, the, uh, the next thing we, we tested uh, was the uh, reconstruction of the fragments with uh, digital fabrication technique. First of all, using a 3D printer, so this was a, um, a one-quarter scale reproduction of one piece. 
And this was a full-scale reproduction using a CNC router. So these techni techniques could be uh, applicable to a story preservation project, for instance. And um, so as a conclusion, uh, what the uh, goal is, is to turn these projects into a program uh, because, of course, there are lots of lost buildings in the world, and uh, we could employ the entire population of China, probably, doing digital models of lost buildings. And, um, and this offers a, a great opportunity also for some outreach, for some collaborations with the institutions like museums. Um, uh, and, in fact, we, are, uh, we have agreed already on a collaboration with uh, uh, Nickel Archive, Richard Nickel Archive in Chicago for this a Chicago Stock Exchange building. And uh, uh, finally, I'd really like to thank the people that have supported this work. Uh, the college and both states have been very supportive, but I would say that without the students that have been working on this, um, we would not have done anything like that. We have a real blood life of this uh, project. So I'd like to thank all of them. Uh, and uh, they are here. Some of them are still working on, uh, on the Santa Maria Antigua project. So thank you. Thank you so much, Michele. It's, uh, it's very fascinating work. Um, uh, we have a time for a, a couple of questions. Have you come up with any solutions to uh, the problem of having to reduce the, uh, uh, the definition of, of the project um, when you had to combine it? Uh, no, we haven't. And that's something, uh, one of the major issues we need to address if we want to uh, work with, uh, with point clouds. Um, and uh, so that's a problem mainly of, of hardware. That's a um, good, good question. One last question. Kelly, do you, I mean, obviously for a project like the Stock Exchange Building, you have the availability of existing drawings and, you know, maybe, you know, plaster casts or, or something that uh, uh, you can, I mean, I, I think that the scope of it is actually reading from the existing, you know, building material and relative to the, to the Roman Forum, it may be difficult. It's obviously a lot more difficult because all you're working with is fragments. In this case, you know, you're working with uh, with fragments of a, of a much more, you know, recent building. Is it is it your purpose to do any modeling of the rest of the of the structure or? Right. Uh, the the idea is to model uh, initially two systems. I've just submitted submitting now a, a grand proposal actually for the. Uh, for, for the continuation of the Chicago work on the stock exchange. Uh, the idea is to build uh, the digital model of the uh, facades of the, of, the, of the skin, of the envelope of the building, and the structural system. So the two things are related very strictly, or at least we want to plug that relationship. Um, and we have found um, the original drawings, the original drawings of that building are in the uh, Richard Nickel archive. And uh, that's why we agreed to work with them and we'll uh, digitize all those documents. That will be part of the database and, and will also be used, of course, for the reconstruction of the building. Uh, there are also some other fragments that are around uh, partly at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, there's a part of the freeze at the uh, University of Southern Illinois in Edwardsville. There are some other pieces in Chicago. So that's another case where you have uh, uh, documentation of different type uh, dispersed in different places, and we can then put that together digitally and, and be a sort of uh, hub for both scholars and, and the general public to have access to that information. Thank you very much, Michele.
going to be uh, Sir Richard Higgs and me eat cream at 5 p.m. Uh, I have a, a very important announcement before we get started. Uh, not something that we need to stream, but uh, I just caught wind from uh, from Chris that we're having strawberry shortcake in the atrium afterwards. So please bring your appetites, and uh, your your sugar fix will be satisfied. 